Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Daniel Torres. Daniel is doing some amazing work and is helping so many people, so I'm excited to have him on to share a story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drkaseyjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, also be sure to check out the Shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series and learn about the Unlock Wellness Project, which supplies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Daniel Torres. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Daniel Torres and Daniel is a vegan surfer. He's also a vlogger and he's just doing some really positive work. So I'm excited to have him on to share his story with you guys and just everything that he's been working on. So Daniel, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Thanks. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. So, you know, Daniel and I, we actually, uh, we actually connected through social media. He was just doing some really awesome work in the plant-based community. So um, just you know, excited just for you to share your backstory because I honestly yeah. don't know it. So why don't you just <laughs> you know, take us back and walk us through what your health looked like at a younger age, how it's progressed, and just walk us through it. All right. So I'm Puerto Rican. And growing up, we had like a very meat-centered, I don't know, diet, I guess you could say, a lot of like fried foods, heavy oil-based foods. And Honestly, if you would have told me when I was a kid that I was going to stop eating meat, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, at, growing up, I was like heavily into skateboarding, wanted to be a sponsored or like a pro skateboarder. I got sponsored by a local company. They ended up going out of business and I kind of just stopped getting free skateboards. And I was like, well, I'll just start surfing. Uh, around the time I started surfing, I started getting into like fitness. So I was about 17 years old. Um, I saw, you know, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, all them up on the Olympia stage. And I was like, oh, I want to be like that. Just be massive. So here I am, this 140 pound kid trying trying to be like a shredded 225 pounds, which at the time I thought was feasible, (laughs) at least for me. (laughs) Um, So yeah, after about, let's see, I was 17. Then I just started, I went to college at Florida Gulf Coast University I'm still working out and I probably got up to around 2014 up to about 190 pounds at like 9% body fat. Um, Still heavily just eating meat, like the typical uh, chicken, lean meats, rice, uh, sweet potatoes, that type of Mm -hmm. stuff. And then I got, after that, I kind of went down to like 160. Then I went back to like 170 and it wasn't until last year that right before my wife and I went to California, she was like, hey, like there's this movie called Vegucated. Uh, we should watch it. So we sat down and watched Vegucated. And let me tell you that that was like super eye-opening for me. And even then, like I wasn't 100% like, yeah, I'm going to go vegan. But I was like, yeah, maybe I can do some things to try to change things. Because I've always been interested in like, I mean, coming from Florida Gulf Coast University, which is like a very uh, environmental school, we were always kind of around that. And the school always educated us on environmental stuff and protecting the environment. And as a surfer as well, like I want to protect the oceans and keep those around. I mean, there's a statistic I saw today, which is something like in 2048, we're going to be out of uh, like no wild fish in the ocean. Insane. And I yeah. saw that. I saw that exact same thing. Did you repost yeah. it? I might've saw it on yours. No, I didn't post okay. it. I, I was going to just now, but I was, I, I got sidetracked, but yeah, which is insane to think of like as a surfer, it's, I kind of take that time to, you know, 
enjoy my time and like wild with the wildlife and fish and sometimes you see manatees mm-hmm. uh turtles the occasional shark which isn't as fun to see um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i saw that then we went to california spent a week there i actually did the uh i was really into like parts unknown or whatever that anthony bourdain show was called mm-hmm. and i like recreated his whole trip in like chinatown and all of his stay in LA, I ate every single meal that he ate, which obviously is not vegan at all. Right. Um, so when we came back, we saw what, Cowspiracy, we saw um, Forks Over Knives, and What the Health, and I was like, all right, this is, I was pretty much swayed enough that I was like, I don't need it to survive. So I cut it out cold turkey. My wife cut dairy probably about a year before that, or like six months before that. And I just, I'm a very like binary person. So I'm either like, I'm all in or I'm not. So I, since we were talking about Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk actually says, he's like, you're either pregnant or you're not, you're not half pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, no Calspiracy. That yeah. was a big one for me. I, like that one, that one hit me pretty hard. I mean, obviously they all did. Um, mm-hmm. I loved that one. Cowspiracy oh, is great. Mine was Earthlings when I saw. Oh, Earth- I, mean, I, I can't I, take it. I take it back. Earthlings. <laughs> oh my I, gosh. I saw Earthlings probably like six months into being vegan, or maybe like. Four uh, months into being vegan. So that was crazy, even, like, right? That movie like blew my mind, and I was like, "How could people see this?" Like, I showed my mom and like stuff like that, and still like she's mostly plant based. Um, but it's just crazy how like someone could watch that and just be like, oh, I'm just going to go back to eat meat. But uh, I mean, yeah. I, I, I get, I was there as well. Like I was the whole, I don't care where my food comes from, like type of guy before. Yeah, the blinders are up. Exactly. And it's like when people told you or like showed you stuff, especially like when we were kids and when they came out with the whole pink slime thing for the hot dogs. Um, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were like, oh, that's gross. But then you still get, like, <laughs> the you went, got the nug- Yeah. You get the hot dogs and nuggets yeah. the next day. Oh, those nuggets were delicious. But, <laughs> you, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's just like, oh my God, like, how can I eat that? And that was, so I've been vegan now for about a year and I've been lifting for, I'm saying I'm 27. So I've been lifting for 10 years now, a year as a vegan. And my first thought was, oh man, I'm going to shrink. I'm going to get small. Mm -hmm. And I actually lost about 10 pounds when I first went vegan. But I'm not sure if it was because of that, because I like wasn't really paying attention to my caloric intake, which is super important when you're going vegan because they're a lot less calorically dense, like plant foods are. Mm -hmm. Or if it was the fact that when I came back from California, I had 104 fever for five days. (laughs) (laughs) Or a combination of the both. Yeah, uh, so the two. I got super sick when we came back yeah. and my wife's like, you need to go to the hospital. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Like, I hate the doctor. I hate the hospital. <laughs> I'm, I I'm with med- you on that one. I just, I, I don't know anything in the medical. I'm just like, no, I'm fine. I don't need it. There's got to be some like natural remedy for it. <laughs> right. um, I mean, I, I survived, which is fine. But yeah, I, I went down to like 160 pounds, something like that, which for me, I haven't been down to that weight since like high school. Um, but then I, I, I'm fine now. I'm at like 170. I was watching like Nimai Delgado, uh, John Venus, Brian Turner, right. really big inspirations for me. And yeah, they're they're all like, I mean, super ripped. Like, I mean, yeah. for for you, like, so your, your natural state. You said in like high school, you're like 140, right? Yeah. So, and how tall are you? I'm five nine. Okay, so like, you know, that's a big like misconception, right? Is that mm-hmm. you know, if you're vegan, you're going to be super, super like thin like sickly right like yeah. you don't really correlate Black circles under your eyes <laughs> exactly <laughs> like you're not like somebody who lifts and like somebody that like because you, you look at somebody like you like you look super in shape so like that's not something no, like nobody's gonna be up to come up to you and be like oh hey man are you vegan you know like yeah. that's not <laughs> nobody would put that together so no. you know like so for you as somebody that wanted to gain weight who wanted to gain muscle like what were some of the things that you did that really helped that along? Obviously you said at first, maybe you weren't getting enough calories. Like what were some things that you did that helped with that? Or like some things when you switched it, you're like, Oh man, this is really working. This is helping me a lot. Yeah. So I, I, well, I've used my fitness pal, which is like an app on the phone that yep. I've used that before. Um, so probably the first like two months, I really just pretty much dialed in my whole diet. So I got an idea because like I can always kind of eyeball like calories, protein, fats, that kind of thing on like a, uh, a meat diet because I've been doing it for 
nine years exactly. of, of me lifting, but like the whole plant world was just way different for me. And like Derek, some net with some net nutrition. Um, I've talked to him a few times and he's definitely helped me a lot, kind of like understanding diet and what you need, what you don't need the whole misconception of, you know, you need a gram, a gram and a half uh, per pound of body weight to build muscle. Um, this crazy, like caloric surplus. I mean, right now I don't even track my macros or anything just honestly just because I'm kind of lazy <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean I, I've been doing it a year now so I can kind of get an idea of what I what I'm getting um, but I'm probably getting I don't know less than 100 grams of protein a day I'm probably around like the 2200 calorie mark it's just my fats are super low um, and I'm getting like three to 400 grams of carbs a day but my fitness pal definitely helped with that because and it, the faux meats as well, because I wasn't sure where to get my protein. And I knew that was like an easy source that I didn't have to try to figure out like how much was in it because it kind of set it on the bag. Right. Um, like the whole like Gardein was, I've been using that a lot, but I don't really eat those anymore, which is weird. I probably haven't, I mean, I actually had it for dinner tonight, but other than that, I haven't had like a Gardein or a faux meat in probably like a week and a half. Yeah. It was a good, it's a good transition. Oh food, yeah. Obviously. And like, no, I, I love how that you how you put that because it's like the my fitness pal thing. That's really it's it's really a great tool, um, mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to figure out like this is how much I need to eat. I can track it because until you realize how much like how much you really should be eating and you get that down, yeah, then you don't need to use the app every day because when people get like obsessive like that, oh, yeah. it's counteractive, and you're like, man. I don't want to have to worry about this every day. Like, it's like the people who check the scale every day. <laughs> exactly. Please. Yeah. Yeah. If you're listening, like don't check your weight every single no, day. Like that would drive crazy. you insane. You can gain a pound <laughs> one day, lose three the next, like I, yeah. I mean, once a week. If well, I'm crazy. I'll, I'll go like four pounds from morning to when I go to bed. Right. Like, like my weight fluctuates so much. It's just being consistent. Like pick a day that you do it per week or mm-hmm. better yet every few weeks, you know, like I've, I barely weigh myself anymore. Cause like, the, yeah. it's cool because like when you eat like this, whatever weight you want to be at, like your body will regulate to where it needs to be. And then yeah. it's consistent. Like I've never been more consistent at a weight my entire life. Like yeah. it's very cool. Mm-hmm. Like I had donuts the other day. It's like my body didn't even know I had donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been so long. Since That's I right had. by. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really cool. So like, so once you got that down, you kind of realize how much, food you needed to put in like you said mm-hmm. some of the faux meats really helped you out with that transition so yeah for you like what like more beans rice veggies obviously smoothies things yeah like- i so i love indian food and i probably eat indian food almost every day or some variation of it uh it's a lot of like chickpeas lentils a lot of rice a lot um, of curry <laughs> oh my god i love curry i had curry last night um <laughs> and today um but the good thing about indian food is like it's very easy to veganize like Indian food. And it's also a lot of calories. So I, I know if I sit down at a meal, I'm having six to 800 calories right there, which is probably like lower on the fats, higher in the carbs. Um, proteins probably, you know, 20, 30, sometimes 40 grams of protein in that, depending how much I eat. So if I have like one Indian meal, if I have like a shake, which I, I use Vivo Life. So I just started becoming an affiliate with them about a month ago. Cool. Um, and then I'm actually with planet protein as well now with Brendan. Awesome. He's uh, great, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I actually met him through another friend. I was at veg fest here in, in space coast. Cause I live in, in Cocoa beach area. Nice. Um, and my friend Josue is like, Oh, like I have a friend you should meet. His name is Brendan runs planet protein. I was like, cool. So I kind of like reached out to him on Instagram, started talking to him. And that's when I saw your post on Vero and I was like, Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> and I was like, hey, is, is Brendan on here? And that's how we started talking. Right. Um, so, cool. so yeah, that's pretty much like all I use. I, I, I use like a multivitamin as well um, from Viva Life called Thrive, which is like a raw super food with greens and pretty much a multivitamin. Um, I have their BCAAs that I take as well. And then just like two scoops of protein, which would leave me at like 50 grams just in a shake plus whatever I eat during the day. Nice. Nice. No, I, I love it. Cause I mean, it really is easy. And like, I mean, just when you're like describing what you eat, like it's so doable and, mm-hmm. and you know what you, people don't even really, ha- you don't have to even have the supplements to make it doable. Oh, not uh, at obviously, all. Obviously like, you know, if you can and you want to, they're there, but yeah. you don't even, you don't even even have to do that. So it's like people kind of, 
overcomplicate it sometimes when it's, yeah. it's really easy to do. The, the whole supplement industry in like the vegan world, it's, it's interesting because it turns a lot of people off because a lot of it just isn't good. Right. Or it just doesn't taste that great. And that's why like planet protein and vivo life, like honestly, we're the best I've ever had, which is why I'm super stoked to like be a part of that. Otherwise, like I wouldn't because I've had some other ones. I'm not going to name other companies, but <laughs> It just, it wasn't that great or like the ingredients weren't like completely sustainable or they're using like ingredients that I disagree with, even though they may be plant-based like palm oil and stuff like that. Right. So it, it's just kind of difficult to find something. That's, that's why I found something and I stuck with it. Like I was using Viva Life for six months before they even reached out to me. That's which is, cool. I'll have so to, I, haven't, I haven't had any of their products that I'll have to. Yeah. But yeah. as far as Planet Protein, they're, I mean, yeah, big plug for yeah. Planet Protein and what Brennan's doing and, and mm-hmm. his girlfriend Carly, they're both amazing and like that um the, their products, I mean, it not only taste great, like yeah. the ingredients are great, like you said, sustainable, no palm oil. Um mm-hmm. yeah, so big shout well, out it's to Planet Protein. Because I had a, a protein bar company that's it's a large one that sent me a bunch of stuff through Instagram and come to find out like sustainability wise, like weren't using the best ingredients, they didn't taste the best. So I reached out to Brendan because I haven't tried uh, his bars at that point. Mm-hmm. He sent me out a couple boxes and I was like, this is world's different. Like it honestly does not taste like plant protein bars on the market taste. No, it, is, like, so no it's, they're really great. I, actually, I need to order more. It's a good yeah, reminder. So for, I, just, I, <laughs> I might do that. Yesterday. I might do that when we jump off. But uh, no, that, that's awesome. I love that. And like, so kind of walk us through like, um, I know you do a lot on YouTube. If, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you do follow Daniel on social media, he goes by the swole surfer, which yep. I think is really creative and I like it. Um, but <laughs> kind of walk us through, <laughs> <laughs> tell a good job. It's, I yeah. love it. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, so kind of why you started to build a platform. What was first? Was it YouTube yeah. and um, your whole thought process, creative process do that? Yeah. So it started when I had Instagram initially, I was called forever bulking. And <laughs> it's because. Was it EVA? It was. Was it ever? <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was so funny. And I actually followed some kid on Instagram who took the original forever bulking that I couldn't have. And it, it was just kind of a funny relationship we had. Um, but it was because I was always stuck in the mindset of I need to get as big as I can, I need to get as massive as I can. Um, and I kind of like neglected the functionality of my body. So, I mean, when I was 190 pounds, like, being a surfer, being a soccer player, like I suffered greatly with that. Like I wasn't as agile. I was like, you know, kind of like partially tearing ACLs and ligaments in my knees. Um, a lot of ankle issues when I was surfing, I was practically a boat. Like my board is five eleven, five ten, depending on what I'm riding. So it's a pretty smaller board. It was just harder to get into waves. Like it just wasn't, wasn't great. So like the weight I am now is just, is just much better. But through Instagram, I, that kind of transition, I was like, now that I'm vegan and I've always done some sort of video production, like I wasn't, I've taken TV production and been editing video since I was 15, I think. So I've always been kind of around that, like equipment and software and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, now that I have this, like, I feel like I have the the personality or the voice or something to kind of like spread a message. And I was like, I need to utilize this. I need to like, take advantage of a platform that I'm given that's so easily attainable to everyone. Like Instagram is so easy to use. I mean, you have people in their sixties using it. I mean, even YouTube. So that's why I started the YouTube uh, specifically for that. Like I had my YouTube channel where I had like old surfing videos and little montages I put up, but I started taking it more serious probably about last August. Um, I mean, and I have demographic from 65 year olds, 15 year olds, which is crazy because I never thought people of that age or whatever. Right. Or range was even looking at my videos. Um, so it was definitely interesting. <laughs> that, is, that is. And like, yeah, like you said, Instagram is pretty incredible. Like, yeah. I mean, the, like, the reach you can get, just the content that you can put out. Uh, it's not just photos now, like video is a pretty big portion of it. And yeah. uh, with Instagram stories, it's kind of taken over everything. Yeah. On so, there, I, so I have every day I do a uh, coffee talk on Instagram through my story. Nice. Um, so I, I'm obsessed with coffee. I mean, I know there's people who say coffee's good for you. Coffee's bad for you. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll be honest. I drink probably about a pot a day. I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just really enjoy it. Like being Hispanic, like I've been drinking Bustelo uh, coffee since I was like, I don't know, 10 years old, nine years old. 
and I haven't really <laughs> stopped. <laughs> so like I, I decided to build something around that, something that I, I enjoy coffee. And then sometimes I'll have like a topic of the day or it's something that's been on my mind or something that I noticed. And I kind of transitioned that to cross platform that into YouTube and I do coffee talk Tuesday on YouTube only. So it's kind of like in front of the camera. Type Is it YouTube, thing. YouTube live or just straight YouTube? No, no. I just uploading a video. I usually just do it like one take uncut. It honestly takes me five minutes to record five minutes to upload five minutes to put it on YouTube because I don't do any editing with coffee talk just because that's kind of the whole idea <laughs> behind it. Right. To be more real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gotcha. No, that's cool. So like, so you made the, you know, you, you started doing that. You started putting up more on YouTube, started going more by like that, the Swole Surfer kind of brand. Right. So yeah. like, how has that progressed? How has it opened doors? Like, uh, when did it really start to pay off for you? Just the consistency? Yeah. So I, I initially just started it just to reach more people kind of showing them that you can be vegan and build muscle at the same time. I mean, I know there's a bunch of other people doing that as well, but it was just something I was interested in. I, I didn't really see any like big vegan surfers, except I think uh, Tia Blanco, who's on the WSL. She's a vegan, right. pro, pro vegan surfer. Do you know, I know her? Do I know her? Yeah. No, not personally. Oh, okay. I got yeah. You. She's somebody I eventually want to get on the podcast. I was kind of curious. If you're listening and you know her, please shoot yeah. me a message about that connection. For real. Um, and I, I know like Kelly Slater's kind of dabbled in it a little bit. I did see um, that. That'd be yeah, awesome. That'd be it great. would. It yeah. would. So I, I just kind of took my passions of lifting, surfing, now being vegan and just kind of put it out there, which I didn't really have. I'm not a person that sets like goals really just because I don't like disappointment. <laughs> I, I feel like if it's like, I'm not a big new year's resolution or guy. Cause if yeah, I set a goal, I don't accomplish it. It's more of a letdown than an achievement. Um, at, at least for me. So it kind of, I, I wasn't sure the direction I wanted to take it besides just getting a voice out there, which it's kind of turned into like, I guess like a smaller influencer type thing for other brands. Um, which is great because I mean, all the brands that I you know talk about are ones that I use personally or that I believe in, right. or that have a good message for them as a brand. So it's kind of it's worked out to at least get me out there to get other people's voices heard that have a similar passion as mine. Like with Planet Protein as, as well, like the whole sustainability of the planet. And honestly, for me, that's like super important. I, I've talked to people, especially like at work and stuff, and. I tell them that all the destruction that agriculture farming has on the environment. And this one kid literally said, I don't care. I won't be alive. Ooh. And I was, I was like, Oh my gosh, like, are, are you serious? Like, what about, you know, your children, your children's children or your children's grandchildren? I, I don't know. For me, that's just hard to wrap around. Like if I don't want to live in it, I don't want someone in there, but I, you know, I try to like empathize for it. But right. And understand where they're at. Maybe they're yeah. not even close to anywhere to having like, a child yet like for like for me like I have a two-year-old and like yeah. I think about that stuff now mm -hmm. like I think about great great grandkids because like that affects my daughter like I mean that obviously that affects that affects her whole future and it's just like it's yeah. crazy but like you said you have to empathize because you don't know where people are currently at or where they're gonna be because like like you said earlier you know you talk to like younger you mm -hmm. you would never say you were oh, gonna no. plan based yeah. I, I wouldn't either yeah. um you know, so it's like, you don't know where people are going to end up, but, uh, yeah. it's, but it's cool to watch how it progresses. Yeah. It, my wife definitely keeps me have like a level headed on conversations like that. <laughs> I, I always think about her because sometimes I like, I don't know, I, I talk before I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always just try to like, okay, kind of assess the situation, how I should approach it versus just like, you're crazy. Don't do that. So, cause that's not the way to like, spread activism i guess you could say right you kind of cram things down people's throats <laughs> and why i like you know people like um that really people through that i've been able to connect with through the podcast and people that are ch checking out the podcast and like their audiences because like i feel like it's building this bigger network of um not only people that carry care about like the environment and nutrition and all of that but like it's um you know people like there's a lot of people that are in like the vegan movement that are kind of negative Mm -hmm. and have that like that bad rap but like mm -hmm. the people that i've connected with so far have all been so amazing and like loving and have empathy and like i like surrounding myself with people like that yeah. um so i think it's cool just you know the you know obviously you know you keep building your audiences and then we can collaborate and just build this bigger this bigger network full of people who care but they're actually like 
they really care and like they come from a really good place you know yeah. what i mean well it was cool because like i mean there's times now which i never used to get this before but i'll get dms asking me like nutritional information or stuff that i do or i like i had someone the other day just message me saying that like you're so fun to watch on social media like and it, to me that's just wild that people would even come to me for like some sort of advice yeah. I, don't, I don't think i'm in like some higher i don't know hierarchy or whatever that i that i know more than anybody else um so when people ask me for stuff like i'm just like i don't really know but i was like this is what i do right <laughs> <laughs> so i've never really delved into like too much science i guess just more so how my body responds um and, and i feel like my, my body's just it's weird man i could just fluctuate at least before now my, like you said my weight's pretty stable as it is as well but before i can go 15 pounds in a month one way or the other yeah yeah i, I mean and it's cool coming from a place of like experience because when people reach out they're like you know well what are you doing it's not like you're coming at them with a bunch of like science and stuff because honestly when people want help like that that's not what they want for the no. most part yeah, um, yeah obviously you can throw it in there it helps but they want to hear what you're doing and like how it's affecting you. Like stories can have a way bigger impact sometimes than throwing yeah. all the science out there, which is a hundred percent there. Like if you want that, shoot me a message. I can, you know, hook you up with some of the research, but like, yeah. um, yeah. And those stories are so powerful. A lot of it with like the nutrition too. They're like, give me a recipe or like a meal yeah. plan or something. And I'm like, it's honestly not everything you see like on social media of this elaborate meal of like some <laughs> creativeness. Like honestly, sometimes it's just some frozen vegetables and some rice that I exactly. just throw together. I know. I need to start posting more of, of what I eat because I, yeah. I'm bad about it. Because like you said, like there's a lot of nights where we keep it so basic that it looks yeah. boring, but it's just like, it's. <laughs> I, this what you, like it, yeah. it does help people it does help people like yeah. but tonight i actually should because i made a vegan lasagna oh, and nice. it, looks, it looks so pretty <laughs> and it's so easy i'm like this is the kind of stuff that <laughs> yeah lately like te tempeh tacos have been my thing oh that sounds good I, oh man they've, they've been super good tempeh is like really weird for people who've never had it before but when, when i tell them to try it they're like go oh, that's not as bad as i thought like it's actually really good and i was like i'd I can eat tempeh raw. Like I, I love it. Oh, tempeh. You know, I haven't had it raw, but like, um, I like lightly cook it like in a skillet, but like, oh, yeah. some of, like the, um, kind of like Buffalo hot sauce. Oh yes. That's like, put those in tacos with, oh, with the, with the just, yeah. uh, the just ranch. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's super good. I want to get off here and eat. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, see, it's like stuff like that. It's like just when you, whenever you can follow somebody on social media and you can ask each other and like see mm. what they're posting and eating, like, it's really how you learn and like just yeah. that community. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. I, I've always tried to remain, I guess you could say like reachable or attainable. Cause there, there's so many times, like I've, I've messaged so many like influencers, even people who are a part of um, like big and bigger companies or organizations and stuff who have, I don't know, hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, followers and stuff, which I get, like they probably get DMS all the time and just crazy stuff they never see. But you have like an actual heartfelt question that never gets reached or never gets answered. Um, I mean, I have even sent Gary Vaynerchuk, which I know he's a super busy guy and I I've, I've actually saw him in person in Tampa when he was here. I'm so jealous. I, oh my God, I, was so oh, I couldn't get there and I'm so sad. I found out the night before. I, you then, know what I did too. And like, by that time it was too late. I saw I'm it like, on Twitter. Yeah, he places, post, it he on posted Twitter. on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I know. Gosh, I, I, so I told jealous. my wife, I was like, you're calling out tomorrow. We're going to see Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous. Hey, that theater is awesome, right? Oh my God. It was beautiful. so pretty. It's so yeah, pretty. It was yeah. insane. Um, and so I, I've always kind of remained that open line of contact. Like I respond to every DM I get. Every single oh, yeah, me too. I respond to. Unless it's like just hi. Like, <laughs> then I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to respond to that. Or if you're, it's like a spam message that you yeah, know it's not a real. Or like peep my profile or you're cute. It's like, okay, <laughs> no, that, that's not what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> right. No, that's funny. No, I agree. That's no. Yeah. Just being super like reachable and stuff because mm -hmm. like the, yeah. I mean, you don't, but you, yeah, you don't know how far like that'll reach. Um, I mean, I can't, there's been a lot of people that have reached out that, you know, I, like you said, like I'm going to respond to anybody that, that shoots me a message, but like, yeah. and then people share the podcast like on their page and like, I don't ask them to do that, but it means a lot because oh, yeah. even if it's a few hundred people that see it, like that's huge. Like that, yeah. that means the world when people share. How, how um, long have you had the podcast now? Um, it, it'll be a, a year, uh, it was April 13th. Okay. Um, so it's almost a year. Sweet. So, uh, yeah. So it's, it, it's been really cool to just 
I mean, as consistent as possible. And it's, uh, it's been really amazing just the connections I've been able to make yeah. this, this year is I've made more connections and had more really awesome opportunities than yeah. just because just the consistency it's, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like, I, I know that you're about to make some big changes, right? You oh, and yeah. your, you and wifey are moving to California. Yeah, so I'm currently sitting on my bed on the floor with no bedroom <laughs> set. I have crammed everything that I have in my life in one guest bedroom right now because the house that that we own, my my in laws just moved into because they're going to take over the house. Uh, we move in May to California, so we're, we're going to go the Huntington Beach area, like Orange County area, because my job's transferring me out to Santa Ana. Um, and she just had an interview out in Santa Ana as well. So fingers crossed, she gets that job. Yeah, um, yeah. So April 13th, we're flying out to, to go find a place to live and just kind of go out there. There's a world-class surf out there. The vegan community is insane. Right now they have the vegan street fair out in, in LA that I see everybody at. I'm super, I know, me too. I'm super yeah. jealous. I do want to start getting to more of those events um, mm-hmm. because it's, it's cool to connect with people because they're always there. I went to the Miami, um, the, the Seed Food and Wine. Have you yeah. ever been to that one? No. It was really great. Like I got to like meet Rich Roll and his wife and oh, um, nice. a bunch of, I mean, just a bunch of really cool people. It was, it was awesome though. Yeah. I've been meaning to go down to like South Florida and Southwest Florida because they have like a bunch of people. And I, I know people who run like the anonymous for the voiceless over in uh, Southwest Florida. Um, and they're always like at all those events, but I just, with my job, it's kind of hard to travel three hours South for the day and stuff. And I swear every time. So I alternate weekends that I work. And every time there's an event, <laughs> it's the weekend I work. And I'm like, oh, I can't go again. Right. <laughs> so uh, no, those, those events are, are really awesome. But that's, no, that's, that's cool that you, uh, I, so April 13th, you're head, so you're going to be flying on, on my podcast anniversary. So you'll have to. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put, put it, when you do it, I'll just save it. Give me something to listen to on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, like, no, that's really cool. Cause you're going to have a really awesome, uh, vegan community over there. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. There was this, uh, in Costa Mesa, not too far. I was watching this, just a video that popped up on, on Facebook and there's a Mexican vegan bakery that's, that's in awesome. Costa Mesa. And I was like, Oh my gosh. I was like, I'm going to get so fat. I'm going to be there every day. <laughs> so you said like Indian was your go food or your go oh, yeah. vegan. Mexican is my go-to. I is can it? probably eat Mexican food every <laughs> single day. So like, be, being Puerto Rican, like I love Hispanic food and, Indians just it, it's so hard for me to choose between the two because uh, they're, they're very very close for me it is it's hard <laughs> <laughs> I do like Indian food yeah it is it is good I like uh, really spicy food so I always order it Indian hot and they're always like are you sure and I'm like yes yes trust me just give me a lot of water too I'll be fine <laughs> that's funny no I love that I love that and like what were some of like the the struggles that you had whenever you made that switch or was it all pretty easy once you made it since you said you're pretty much in or out yeah so the first week, it, not that it was it was hard, but I, I guess like I wasn't a hundred percent sold on it, and I was just kind of doing it with my wife, who was doing it as well. Um, and actually, that the end of the first week, I I said I can't anymore, and I went to McDonald's and I got a Big Mac because that was always like my go to like burger, to, yeah. like on the go for some reason. <laughs> I just I just liked it, and it was the most disappointing burger I've ever had. <laughs> and that was the last piece of meat I ate. <laughs> but that's an amazing story, though. Yeah, <laughs> you should you should never leave that part out of your story, like ever again. Like if you if you're ever on another podcast, I want to hear that in the first paragraph. <laughs> yeah, it was super that's upsetting, funny. and uh, that that was that was pretty much it. So it was all pretty simple once I started watching YouTube, like with Derek Samnet, who did a lot of like nutrition stuff. It was really easy. Uh, for me to kind of get that information, and the information like literally, you Google anything, and it's on right. it. Is is um Derek Sinet is is he, is he plant based or is he more fitness based? Because I I know the name yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, he's uh he's both. He does a lot of calisthenics. Um, okay, so yeah. Like his uh faith or his YouTube and Instagram is mostly like he's a holistic nutritionist or something. gotcha. Um, so he does a lot of that and a lot of like calisthenic workouts and he does go to gym and he goes down to like muscle beach every once in a while. He's over in uh, I think in Vancouver, Vancouver Island is where he's at. That's cool. Yeah, no, um, no, I mean, yeah, the resources on, yeah, the resources are there and like the resources are there for free. Oh yeah. So, like, I mean, either go follow some really awesome people on Instagram or like go listen to a lot of different types of podcasts or yeah. you know, the, the resources are 
are there if you you know really want them. Um, yeah. but I think the first step to make is like definitely just find like follow those people and like kind of figure out that kind of community, like just find some kind of community to help like give you the info mm-hmm. you up whenever you think maybe I should go to McDonald's, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of like different communities. I mean, for me, there's like a, a vegans of YouTube one I'm in this, somebody messaged me on Twitter and then added me on Snapchat. And then now I'm in like a 30 person group of, <laughs> called V gang on Snapchat. Um, oh, that's cool. Is so, that with, um, is that with, um, Tim Sheaf? No, no. It's surprising. It's just a bunch of kids that started it. They're all That's like, cool. some of them are in high school, some of them are in their twenties. Um, so it's, it's just kind of some people in Florida that started it. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I, that's cool. That's cool. And like, you know, we were talking about some of the stuff you're working on, but like, is there anything else happening like in the future that you just want to put out there for people to be looking for or just continue to put out really great content? Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm just totally going to vlog the whole trip to California. Awesome. So every single day, I'm, I'm going to try at least to do a daily vlog when I get out there. Because I mean, I'm stopping in Grand Canyon. I'm stopping in Louisiana. I need to stop in Roswell. Like that was my favorite show when I was a kid. So I've always wanted to go to Roswell. Um, the whole trip of finding a house or like a place to stay, I'm going to document. I think a lot of it for me is just the whole documentation aspect because coming up with concepts of creative content is is kind of difficult for me because I don't really have, I don't, I don't write a lot of ideas down and I should. And my, my phone's like full of notes, but I always forget to look back or it's just hard for me to, to have a schedule. So I'm a very like on a whim type person. Um I'm not one to like plan things out too much. Like this whole California move basically was like, we went to the trip last year and when we got home, we're like, all right, we're moving. (laughs) So it's like, you start to realize, okay, crap, I I own a home. Now I have to figure out what to do with that. Or, oh, I'm in debt. I got to figure out how to get out of that. Which, so, I mean, my wife, bless her for this. She like totally came up with a whole plan to get us like a hundred percent ready for California within a year. and it's totally worked out. That's awesome. None of it because of me, because I'm very bad <laughs> at like planning things like financially and stuff. I'm like, here's money, do something with it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so if it wasn't for, her, I'd probably be in a ton of debt just cause I have no self control. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely just continue going on YouTube, Instagram. I, I love Instagram just cause it's so easy to, to connect to people or connect with people. Um, I, I send probably like 20 DMS a day, just talking to people just because I like to talk a lot. <laughs> My wife tells me all the time that like, I literally can have a conversation with anybody on the street just, just because like, <laughs> how's your day going? Right. Or just whatever. It, it's weird. Like sometimes I'll just say hi to people walking by and they just look at you weird. Which is one thing <laughs> in Florida, which is really strange. Like sometimes people are just like, why are you saying hi to me? <laughs> I know. I know. I, um, I, I grew up in West Virginia and like, yeah. I feel like that the friendliness aspect is definitely more there than mm-hmm. it is here. But, um, yeah. we actually live, uh, we live in, Claremont, which is like right outside yep. of Orlando. Mm-hmm. Um, super like active community trails. Yeah. Like people are always like running, walk. I swear everybody on that trail, doesn't matter what day it is. Everybody you pass will tell you hi. Like, really? oh, I think it's like an unwritten rule that, yeah. but it's, but it's amazing. Like it's, it's cool. I love it here. It's, well, I, it's so I grew awesome. up in Orlando, like oh, cool. just, just outside. I went to Colonial High School. So I was kind of like, East Orlando. Gotcha. And you say hi to people and they're just like, what are you doing? But when I, <laughs> when I went to like Australia or when I went to um, California, someone says hi and it's like, they're ready to have a conversation. I was like, this is awesome. It's, awesome. <laughs> it's like, this is totally me. That's awesome. No, I love that. Like, yeah, cool. So you got the blog going to be out every day. Make sure yep. you document too, like where you stop to eat, just the different oh, yes. plant place. That's going to be huge for you I too. I need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also want to do a ghost tour. I've always wanted to do one in, in Louisiana. So that's oh, okay. sure. yeah, that's, that's too scary for me, but you yeah. can document it and I'll well, watch it. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of want to do like the more historical aspect. I'm not trying to like summon things. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. They had those. I mean, like St. Augustine, like that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I've done those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then like, I, I know I mentioned it a little bit, how you, the swole surfer. So like, is that the best way to reach you yeah, on so everything? On everything, Snapchat, Twitter, Vero, uh, Instagram, everything's the swole surfer. Um, all my discount codes for Vivo Life is swole surfer 10, Planet Proteins, the swole surfer. Uh, so pretty much everything is that just because it's just so much easier to 
to reach somebody if they have the same name. Like I know your yeah. name is like the same across everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so hard trying to look up someone and then like figure out they have a different name somewhere else or there's like a different character in there. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Difficult. It makes it so much better. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So th- I'll definitely put that in the show notes so people can go click follow you and keep up with your blogs and, and social media. And then Daniel, just a closing question that I ask every guest. Uh But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that's been your biggest takeaway through your whole wellness journey. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what Mm -hmm. would it be? It would probably be don't listen to people when they tell you you can't get enough protein through a plant-based diet. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. And and very, very true. (laughs) No, that's awesome, Daniel. Thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited just to share what you're doing because I love it. And um, yeah, just everybody go give him a follow. And just Daniel, thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Daniel. I love the work he's doing. So be sure to give him a follow on social media to keep up with everything that he's been working on. You can find his social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes. But you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Daniel's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Daniel, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action. 